thank you so much for your time. Um, I want to get straight into it and talk about Black Lives Matter. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we've seen just this massive um, civil rights protests all over the world. Um, do you think we're close to reaching a sort of tipping point? I think this is, I think this is a crucial time, actually, um, in the global fight against racism, not just in the UK, because obviously this first got... Um, kick-started by what happened in America and George Floyd. Uh, and we can see the level of support for uh, anti-racism campaigns and the need to eradicate racism from our society here on these shores too. It just seems like to me that society has been fractured um, for quite a few years now. I think racism has always existed in, in all sorts of forms. Um, if it's not overt, it's kind of under the surface. Uh, it feels now that people are finding their voice um, whether it's to dish out their own racist views or to dish out what they feel is a way to kind of educate others without really trying to sound condescending. I think what we've seen in the last few years, um, kind of almost emanating from the start of the Brexit campaign, um, you know, you, you, kind of opinions have been almost polarised, haven't they? Everything's become more tribal. Um, politics as a result has become more extreme. For example, you know, when Brexit and the campaign started, you're either in the EU or you're out of the EU, which tend to reflect individuals' thoughts on their views on immigration, whether they're pro-immigration or anti-immigration. And then you add in the kind of added stress of what lockdown has brought in with many people kind of stuck indoors. And there's been almost in kind of like a, a, a boiling point that's been reached. But once we've seen what's happened in America, it just feels now that we're at this tipping point, as you mentioned, and that, you know, the protests that have gone on around the, uh, the country, I feel have been, have been warranted, I feel have been right, you know, but then again, we're finding ourselves treading this fine line, this tightrope as it is, of how to maintain social distancing, because you don't want the COVID element to also then play its part. And what it's done is it's added layers and layers of kind of uh, arguments and debate and what matters more. Is it COVID? Is it the health of the nation? Is it race relations? Um, and it's very hard to try and separate the two because we all need to be healthy if we're going to fight this, ra uh, fight this you know, battle against racism. Um, in an ideal world, you'd want protests happening right now with there being strict social distancing. Um, but passions are running so high of course, social distancing doesn't seem to be um, kind of um, playing its, its part right now. Um, but the message is clear. We're at this point now where racism, which for a lot of times has been covert, it's been under the surface, it's now being called out. Even me, on a personal level, with two young girls who are eight and 11, uh, I'm now checking almost everything I say. I'm checking myself. I mean, some might say, because I'm from an ethnic minority, I can't have prejudices, but we all do. Um, and it, you know, this is something I've now become more aware of more than anything. And now also from my point of view, if I go into the workplace, if I see friends and family members and there is something in their points of view that I feel needs challenging, I'm now in a position where I just feel now is the time to say something. It might not go down well, but then again, I think a lot of it's down to how you put it across. I don't think you should do this with anger. I just think we need to do this with a sense of reasoning. You talk there about education. How important do you think it is that everybody takes on a responsibility to enhance their education about race? Um, I saw a post online yesterday and I, I didn't think the girl was racist, but I thought she was extremely, extremely uneducated and ignorant. Um, and I thought if maybe she expanded um, her understanding of what she was talking about, then she'd have an entirely different um, an entirely different view on it. How important do you think it is um, for people to educate themselves? I think everybody needs to try and educate themselves. I had to educate myself, even about the story of Edward Coulston. You know, what's been going on in Bristol? The fact that his statue was toppled over and, uh, you know, and we could see those images of it going into the, um, into the river as it was there. Um, I had to Google what Edward Coulston was about. Uh, and maybe shame on me for not knowing before, because I like to think that, you know, I've got a pretty um, uh, decent view of the world, but then there are certain accounts, of course, that, that you're not aware of everything. 
Um, and I agree, yes. You know, it's wrong to have a statue of somebody who may have done a lot for the city of Bristol, but obviously got a lot of his favours uh, and garnered a lot of his money from the slave trade, and that's unacceptable. Therefore, to have a statue in his memory just feels wrong to have him in public view. If you want to see the statue of Edward Coulston, clearly, you know, as debates gone on since, the best way may be to have him in a museum. Um, because in that way, people can go and visit him uh, because it's their choice to go there, not to have him in the public sphere um, where, you know, it feels like he almost has his right place um, in the public eye, which make, makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, so on the Edward Corston story alone, that for me has shown that, you know, education is key. When it comes to the Edward Colston statue, um, there's, since there's been a lot of discussion around the way it was done and there's democratic processes to be followed and things like that. Um, the Home Secretary said that, I think the word she used was absolutely disgraceful, um, talking about um, the group that pulled down the statue. Um, obviously, yeah, there is democratic processes, but they don't always come up with results. So what's your stance on that? I just don't think violence is the key. And I hate to sound as if I'm sitting on the fence or as if I'm being pacified. We just look at uh, movements in the past, um, the likes of Mahatma Gandhi um, in India, Martin Luther King in America, even Nelson Mandela in South Africa. These are individuals, of course, who've taken their right place in history for fighting their battles. Um, uh, in a dignified way, um, they, the fact that we're talking about violence is ironic in itself because that's what kick-started this latest um, movement, of course, with the, um, the murder of George Floyd uh, and what that police officer did. And if we're saying that's wrong, using violence to put our views across that racism is wrong is just as wrong. Um, so I feel that, you know, we need to do this the right way. And the government have come up with one or two, I feel, slightly out of sync messages. But Rishi Sunak, who released a statement, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, that if you want to make change permanent, you've got to do things in a certain way. And that is not through violence. And I'm inclined to agree with that. Four years ago, we saw Colin Kaepernick, um, the NFL player in the United States, um, be essentially kicked out of the game um, for kneeling during the national anthem in protest of civil injustice. Um, I mean, it seems like he's been vindicated since in the past few weeks. Um, just talk to me about your, um, your personal views on that. You know, it just feels like in, in this day and age, we're almost coming round to um, reason and the right way of thinking something that's gone on recently, if it isn't the Windrush scandal of 2018, and now clearly that's been highlighted by BBC documentaries, Colin Kaepernick and uh, in American sport is another one, the fact that he was ostracized, not just by his teammates in America for taking the knee uh, in that symbolic move. He was of course also then ostracized by um, the game's governing body. And now we look to America and everybody, in a state of power, in, a, in a, um, a position of authority, are now taking the knee, so to speak. If it's not the, you know, the Democrats in America, if it's not the Republicans in certain respects, we're seeing politicians do something likewise. Even the police in America trying to show unity and togetherness with those protesting that Black Lives Matter are also taking the knee. I mean, these are powerful images. And what it goes to show is that in the two years that Colin Kaepernick hasn't managed to maybe get a job or be almost reintegrated back amongst his peers, that he had the right idea all along. We all know that football's um, had an awful past with racism and um, I sort of get the vibe that the tide is slowly changing, seeing players like Raheem Sterling and Danny Rose coming out and speaking out and using their voice. Um, and I think players speaking out is something that we've not really seen um, that much in the past. And, you know, I certainly think that the entire sports response to the past couple of weeks, um, they're really almost leading the way 
um, in the fight against racism. Um, what's what's your stance on football's current relationship with racism? You know, you can see the tide is turning within football um, because as of late, we've only really seen people of colour come out visually to talk about how they believe racism exists, uh, not just within the sport, but how it's almost a reflection of society. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Romelu Lukaku was one, uh, Raheem Sterling the other. But now we are seeing others uh, from other backgrounds. Jurgen Klopp, for example, has been mentioned. Um, John Henderson too. Um, these are guys who are taking the lead. And this is showing once again that, you know, um, this isn't just about a black issue being backed by a black man. This is an issue for everybody. Uh, and to see high profile figures, the likes of Klopp, the likes of Jordan Henderson, who may have never experienced racism, who've never stepped in a black man's shoes before, um, but they're giving it their support. And that means everything. Because, you know, there will be people out there who until they see the likes of Klopp and Henderson um, adding their voice and their weight to something like this, they won't take it seriously. And for that alone, I thank those guys um, for doing their part. Manish, thank you so much. Take care, mate.